Hi, so I got a request to do another question just because some people had some problems with the technique. So the question I've been asked to solve is this one here, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6, and the roots of this are of course positive 1, positive 2, and positive 3. So since these are all real roots, we should be able to solve for them with the method. So I'm just going to go and sketch this up quickly. I'm not going to explain um, all that I did in the previous video, but I'm going to try to say out loud what I'm doing as I go. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, draw up the problem. So I'm just going to start here. So I'm going to call that point A. And so our first coefficient um, uh, is the coefficient of x cubed, which is just positive 1. So I'm going to be heading in this direction. So that means I'm going to head one centimeter across, which is just two grid squares. Yep, just there. And so that's a three, and its direction is that way. The next coefficient is negative six. And so we want to turn 90 degrees anti-clockwise at each coefficient. So if I turn that way, we'd want to head, head in that direction. However, since it's a negative coefficient, we're going to head down the other way. So I'm going to go six units down, which of course I'm using centimeters because that's what this grid is in. So down to here, and so then that's A2, and I've got the arrow heading up um, to show where the positive direction would be, but we've of course headed in the negative direction. So the negative coefficient is positive 11, and so now we're going to turn 9 degrees anti-clockwise again, and so it's positive, we're going to head that way, cool. So let's draw that out. Cool, we got A1 there, positive direction, and then we want to turn 90 degrees once more. We're heading there, but the last coefficient is negative six, so we're gonna head six that way. So let's just draw that out. Cool, and this is of course gonna be point B, because this is our end point, and it's also the A0 coefficient. So, um, now we just need to draw our R dash and S dash axes. So, of course, we recall that in order to do that, we've just, so for R dash, we find our A2 line, and then we move a distance equivalent to A3 on the other side of it and draw a line parallel to A2. So, we can see here, it's just one, it's one centimeter across, so I'm just gonna do a line one centimeter the other side of A2. Cool, let's draw that down. And then similarly with S dash, that's going to be A1, but A0, the other side of it. And so that was 6, so let's just go 6 down, which is on this grid line. Bring that up so you can see it. Yep. Cool. So now let's just rule that across. And so let's just label these. This is R dash and this is S dash. And so now um, we're just going to make sure we follow the, the method which requires us to take A onto the R dash axis while simultaneously taking the point B onto the S dash axis. So let's go ahead and do some folding. So I'm just going to fold it over. And so my strategy that I use for this is I try to place A on R dash first and then try to slide it up and down until B meets with S dash. So I'm just going to chuck um, A onto R dash, which is it's on there. And so B, so that's, so A is there. And so B is not, oh, it's pretty close. So let's give it a bit of a slide. So still want to take it a bit. So about there. And so now I'm going to fold this out. And so if we just take a peek, we see that um, B falls onto S dash there. And then we see that A, A falls onto R dash there. And so you could do a little trick <coughs> by poking a hole through the paper between on points A and B. And then you can kind of see the axis on the other side. But I had a bit of difficulty with that. But I don't know, give it a go. It might work for you. So now I'm just going to take note of where these um, intercepts are. 
So this is pretty much dead on the intersection of R dash and S dash. And so I'm going to call this point B1 and then A, that's here. And so I'm going to call that guy, that guy A1. And so now let's go ahead and draw our lines. So I'm just going to link these up. And I'm going to need a slightly bigger ruler. This. So I'm there. And remember, we along our fold, which should be perpendicular to both of these lines, um, we just want to draw a line straight through. So let's go. Yep. Cool. And so now um, you can get the angle theta in here, here, or here. So let's just take it in here, theta. And straight away you can see, oh, hold on. This ratio is one to one. So the opposite side is one, the adjacent side is one. And we recall from the previous video that our roots are of the form x equals negative tan of theta. And theta is, of course, the same as the opposite side over the adjacent side in a right angle triangle. So here it's negative. Uh, x equals negative and so the opposite side so remember we had to go negative down this line so this would be negative one and this is one along um, a positive axis so it's just positive one along so therefore our root is simply one which is one of the ones we were looking for so cool let's find the next one and so now I'm just going to keep sliding a up r dash okay let's see so I've got A on there, but B is out in um, open space at the moment. So that means I need to keep sliding A up. So let's see A, where are you? So B still needs a bit more. A's on there. Okay, so B has found S dash. Let's just confirm that. So we can see B, he's just poking out there. A, he's just on there, so cool. So let's uh, make a note of where those ones are. So, hold on, so, yep. So we'll make a little line there. And then with B, we'll make a line here. Cool, so now once again, we just gotta draw our lines. So sorry, this is a bit tedious, but I mean, this is how this is how the technique goes. And so um, again, let's just draw a horizontal line that, uh, oh, not a horizontal line, the line that is perpendicular to both of these. And so now let's take a look. So I'm going to measure up here and measure along here. So now let's go, this is about two point, I know, so you see the, the intersection there is about 2.1. So x equals uh, negative, negative 2.1 over, and we know that this is just one along here. So then this gives us a root of 2.1. And so I kind of skewed um, my choice over here a bit to show you that because we're all humans here and we're folding paper, this can be prone to error. So of course we, and so the error is just because um, say, I've got dots here, and then trying to align them onto um, other axes, we, we can be a bit off, but quite close. So see here, 2.1, we know that that's not a root because we know that the proper root should be positive two. However, if we're really careful, say if we intersected right on here, I imagine that this line would have gone straight through there, which would have measured two on here, which would have given us exactly two. But as we're all just humans, um, my folding was a little inaccurate here, and so that's a limitation of the technique. So it may be able to give you a good guess, but if you're looking for something that's dead on with many decimal places accuracy, this technique is not quite um, feasible for that with, with the current way of applying it. I mean, the technique is good. The problem is with the humans applying it. So now let's find the final route. And so I'm gonna keep sliding A up. So, let's see, B is about there, A is about there, righto, 
I'm going to follow that, so I'll just show you. So B, it's right on S dash there, and then A is right on R dash there. So now again, let's mark these points. So here is A3, and then here is B3. Cool. So now let's just go ahead and draw lines. Got one there, and B3 is there. And now, so now, because you've done so many folds, you've got to find the one that's perpendicular to both of your lines that you did. And so it looks like the one that hasn't been ruled is this one. So let's just make that a bit more prominent. Yeah, so now let's go ahead and rule that. There we go. Cool. And so, as I said, you can keep taking the angle in here, but just for argument's sake, um, let's take it in another location. So I said you could take it here or here. So let's take it, let's take theta in here. So let's measure this side. So this side measures up to six centimeters and this side measures up to uh, 1.8, it looks like about there, even though the intercept um, is about there on um, two. So let's, yeah, so let, uh, yeah, so we'll call that 1.8. So then if we go um, opposite over adjacent, so then x equals negative. And so remember, this is a negative axis again. So we've got negative, so that's six over 1.8 x equals, and so then negative six divided by 1.8 is of course something that doesn't come to my mind right now, which is probably um, something like 3.3 .3 or something like that. Let's just do that properly. So yep, yeah, and so it was um, something like 3.3 .3 recurring. So, so you can see, um, that, yep, that's that's pretty close. Again, if you're more careful with your measurements, say here, we noted that the intersect was straight on here, and so that would have given us a ratio of six on two, which would have given us the exact root of three. But And um, so these inaccuracies here, they kind of um, explain why some people may have noticed multiple solutions that they could have solved the problem with. So say they may have found multiple points that worked. What I believe you would have found is through inaccuracies of applying the method, you would have found points uh, kind of in a neighborhood around here and in a neighborhood around here. And so you get an answer that's kind of close to three, but you're not quite dead on. And because say dots are large and everything, um, you might get quite a few ones that look like they're different solutions, but they're actually close or a bit further away from um, an accurate solution. So there you go, hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions.